Welcome to Peace. This is the sixth Sunday after Easter. It's also the third and final week of our series on uh, the epistle of uh, 1 John. Uh, we've been looking at how to really love. Today we'll wrap it up with why we love, the motivation, the reason why uh, God calls us to love others. Um, we welcome you. That we're glad that you are joining us together in worship virtually. Uh, this week we are beginning our services uh, in the parking lot, uh, drive-in service. We welcome you to those. But if you want to continue to worship at home in the safety of your home, you're encouraged to do that. We will continue to be recording these services each week as well uh, to allow all to continue to worship. Let's begin now with our opening song.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant to the word, announce the grace of God unto each of you. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God loves us, and because God loves us, we can love one another. As we love one another, we show the love of Christ living in us and through us. The scripture for the sixth Sunday of Easter is taken from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, 
and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. All right. I'm excited for the children's message today. We're going to talk about a saying. I don't know if you've heard this saying, but it kind of applies to what we're talking about today. The saying is putting the cart before the horse right? Getting ahead of ourselves or something. Um, I have a picture of it. It's in the bulletin if you have that. It's also on the screen, so you can watch there as well. You see that that cart is before the horse. The horse is facing the cart, and the guy is trying to figure out where the horse is because he put it the wrong way. Who would ever do a horse like that? Set up a horse to push a cart, right? What are some of the problems you see with this? Well, we can see some of the problems with the guy can't see the horse. He can't turn the horse. The horse can't see where it's going. And probably the horse wouldn't go anywhere because it's up against the the cart and they don't like running into things. So he might even have a hard time getting the horse to go. And it's just a lot of bad things with that. It will never work, will it? So what does this have to say with what we're talking about today? Well, sometimes when it talks about loving others, we put the cart before the horse, okay? We, we think that our loving others is maybe something that we do to make God like us more or maybe to have others like us more. And that's not the real reason. You know, when we do that, we put ourselves in front of God and that's not right, is it? How did God show his love for us? He loves us by sending his son, Jesus, didn't he? And because of Jesus, his love that he shows to us, we are now able to love. It says in our memory verse for today, 1 John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us. The reason we're able to love is because of God's love in us. So I want you to think about that, right? The love that God has for you, a love so great that he did whatever he could to make you his child because he loves you and he cares for you. I want you to show that love to others because he loved us, right? All right, let's fold our hands, bow our heads, and repeat after me as we pray. Dear God, dear God, thank you for loving us. So much by sending Jesus to save us from our sins. Help us to love others because you first loved us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. We continue now by singing.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. You are our rock. You are our redeemer. Amen. This is, as I mentioned earlier, the third and final week of our series on how to really love. Looking at John's love letter to us, not a letter that loves us, but a, a letter that helps us to love others. This Two weeks ago, 1 John chapter 2, we talked about who to love. Last week, we talked about what is love. And today, we are going to be looking at why we love. Why is it important that we love others, that we love our brothers, that we love those around us? What's our motivation? Motivation is something that, that kind of drives us to do things, whether it's to love others, whether it is to do something that is unrelated to our faith. This winter, I was eating way too much sweets and everything after Christmas, and when I stepped on the scale, it was at the highest weight I had ever seen. I knew I needed to do something, and just about then, we heard of this program that my... Uh, that. Concordia Plan Services, our health insurance company, was offering to, to help uh, lose weight. And it says that you can do this and keep eating what you like to eat. So me being a food person, I thought that is perfect. And we started to get into that. And as they talked, they, they were saying that, okay, if your motivation is simply to lose weight, that's the wrong motivation. Because if your motivation is just to lose weight, you will lose weight. And then, once you've lost that weight, you'll celebrate, have a big meal, and then before long, be back up where you were before. What you need to do is change your habits. Change how you do things. And, and find a different motivation. A motivation of losing weight is great, but really what is a better motivation is living a healthy lifestyle. So that you'll be able to live longer and be more active in that time as well. Who doesn't want that? I really want that. And by the way, I'm getting to that age now where I'm definitely closer to retirement than I was to graduation of, of college. I'm closer to having grandchildren than I am to when I had children, right? So I'm starting to think about that. How long will I be able to function in a healthy way after retirement? That's important. And that's really the motivation, not just simply to lose weight or other things. It's, it's to live that healthy lifestyle in the future. So what does that have to do with what we're talking about? Well, that's, that's kind of has to deal with the reason that we love. What is the motivation for us to love? In this uh, fourth chapter of 1 John, we find the, our motivation, but we also see other things in there that leads us to think why we shouldn't love. We're going to be looking at some of those first. Those things we shouldn't look at as our motivation because they're often, they're wrong and they're focused on, on the wrong things. The first one we find in verse 7. 1 John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. One of the reasons that people love, love others is so that maybe they can, can know God, but that's not the reason we love. We don't love simply so that we might know God, don't know him better. Because as you, we saw in that verse, it says, because those who believe in him have known God. We already know him. In fact, we know him by faith that we have as, as his sons and daughters who've been brought into the faith by the power of the Spirit. We believe in God. We know him. We might not know everything we need to know about him. That's why we continue to study the Bible and continue to learn about him throughout our lives. But some people love others so that they might know God better or maybe a better way to put this, so they might be known to God better. They love others so that God might notice them, might, might see what they're doing and recognize them. But there's a problem with that, isn't there? 
our God already knows us. He is the one that, that calls us by name. He is the one that it says that, that made us in a fearful and wonderful way. See, God created us. He made us who we are, bringing together the genetics, our experiences that we've had in the past to make us who we are today. And, and he knows us. In fact, Jesus talks about how, how he knows uh, every hair on our head. For some of you, you might, he might know you a little bit more than he knows me, right? The point is, he knows us and he loves us. That's the other reason that we kind of do this. Not why we love is so maybe that God will love us more. But can't, God can't love us more. He already loves us beyond our imagination. In fact, while we were his enemies, he loved us. He sent his son to this earth to live and to die for us. He loved us and has made us his own children. Loving others cannot make God know you anymore or love you anymore. It cannot help us to know him more. That's a wrong reason. And, and often that reason comes from our own uh, insecurities that we might have in this life. Thinking that we are, are unlovable or that no one knows us and understands us. But know this. We have a God who knows you, who loves you, who is there for you always. The next reason why not, why we don't, the next reason not to love is from verse 13. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. We, why we love is, is not because of our own power, not by our own power. Often, we, we look at ourselves and we think that love is, is something that we are able to do, right? That we are able to, to do something great. And, and if you look at the world around us, so often you see of so many generous people giving things away and, and making a, a big deal of it, you know? But often the reason people give things away is to help them look better. Not because of love, but because of an advantage to them. We see this in our world in international politics with this whole COVID-19 thing going on. Did you notice how about a month ago, China was sending a lot of personal protective equipment over to Europe and... and uh, making themselves look good and, and everybody was cheering that as such a generous thing to do, but, but realized that they weren't doing that out of compassion for the people in Europe, were they? They were doing that to make inroads with others, with them there, so that maybe later on they will be able to leverage that friendship to get something that they need. It's kind of how some people love and do compassionate things to others to make themselves look better, to, to pay it forward so that they might be able to receive it as well. You see, when we focus on our own power and our own ability to love, we're really focusing on ourselves, on our self-focus, on our self-gratification, on our desires, and not on the one that we're loving. We're really loving ourselves and not others. So that's a wrong reason to love as well. Let's, let's look at an, another verse. This is verse 18. Verse 18, oh wait, I can't get there yet. I forgot about the way that we do love. I missed that part. The reason that we do love is not by our power, but by, as it says in the previous verse, the, the spirit that he has given to us. You see, he has given us his Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. And it says that by this we know that we abide in, in him because he has given us of us his spirit. Abiding in him is obeying him, loving him, trusting in him, believing in him. That's all connected to that abiding in Christ, in our God. And the reason we can do that is because we have his spirit to lead us. You see, it's not by our power that we love 
but it is by the Spirit leading us and guiding us, giving us the direction to focus on that love. Now we'll get to verse 18. Verse 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Another reason that some people love is out of fear. But we are called not to love out of fear. We see this with with our commandments sometimes. How do people most often view the Ten Commandments? They view them as if we do not do these, then God's going to destroy us. He's going to send us to hell and to punish us for our sins. That's being motivated out of fear. And you know what? When we're motivated out of fear, it can help us to do that for a while. But, but after a while, we will fail because we are not perfect And we fall into that despair because we feel the fear of punishment coming after us. This is often what happens when we we train our children, right? We need to to love and give them commands and, and have them show that they're willing to obey. But sometimes they take those commands and they don't see the love in it. Discipline without love is is not the right way to do this. Discipline with love, rules with love behind them is how we train our children and how we've been trained as well. Because if it's just focused on the law, the law motivates us, but it motivates us by fear. Now take a look at those commandments again. That that God gives us, that John has given us time and time again, whether it's in the gospel or in this one, of how we are to love God and love our neighbors. But if we look at those as, as being, being motivated not by the commands, but by the love of God, we, we see that they are something that God gives to us because he loves us. And he wants us to do right and to show that love to others as well. The reason we have no fear if we do fail is because of what our Savior did for us already, of how he suffered and died on the cross for your sins and for mine so that we could be forgiven. He took our payment of our sins upon himself, so we have no reason to fear. We love not out of motivation of fear, but out of motivation of love. It says in the very next verse that we love because he first loved us. You see, our motivation all goes back to, go back to Jesus. His love for us that he showed for us on the cross is the reason that we are able to love one another. We love because he first loved us. So why did he give us the command? If it's as simple as a spirit working in us to lead those commands, why, do we, why did he even give us those? Because it should come naturally. Well, it's kind of like me and, and how I eat, right? I've always said I'm a Burma. I love food. That's one of my problems at times. But, but it comes from when I grew up. We lived on a farm, and I was, as I said a couple of times this series, the fourth of six kids, and when the prayer was over and it was time to eat, you dug in and you ate fast so you could get seconds, right? And you were to eat fast, and that that stuck with me, and by the way, I'm not Joey Chestnut World Championship hot dog eater fast, but I am fast when I eat. But I've learned that that's not good. I need to slow down. Enjoy the taste of food. In fact, they have a rule that you should eat for 10 minutes, take a five-minute break, and eat for 10 minutes so so your head catches up to your stomach. I'm working at that. I'm practicing it. Why? So that I can enjoy the food more. Does that mean how I was taught was wrong by my parents? No, it was just because that's how I had to survive with three older siblings and two younger ones, right? But now we learn. It's kind of like this with our faith as well. 
We have learned the way to live often from the world around us, of how to love for ourselves, of how to love out of fear, of how to love so that God might love us more. That's the wrong reason. The reason we love is because he loves us and that we put that love into practice as guided by the Holy Spirit working in our lives. His love for us will never be greater than it is now. His love for us is something that he has given to us free of charge to share with the world around us. Now, the last couple of weeks, I've given you challenges on, on how to love others. This week, I'm going to change it up a little bit. The challenge that I have for you today is this. I want you to, to look at those different things that we talked about uh, of how of the reasons why we're why uh, the wrong reasons to love, whether it is uh, trying to know God or be known or loved by him more or, um, or simply to, uh, to know who he is and to know his forgiveness. Maybe it's out of fear. Maybe it's for some other reason that we have. I want you to think of all of those reasons and I want you to examine your heart. Why do you love? Why do you serve in the church as so many people do? Why do you help people when they need help? Is it, is it to help stoke your own good feeling about yourself? Is it because you fear someone else or you fear God if you don't? Remember, we love because he first loved us. Bring those false reasons to the Lord Place them at the cross. Ask for his forgiveness, knowing that his forgiveness is free of charge for you. And pray that the Holy Spirit will guide you to know him more, to, to show him, show his love to you and show that opportunity to you as well on how you are to love. And I'll tell you what, this practice, this loving others, as God, because God loved us, it, it takes practice. It really does. Kind of like my eating habits. There's still times where I can eat a piece of pizza in one minute flat, actually less than that. No problem at all, but I still try to take my time. It takes practice. As you practice showing that love of, of being open to God's leading by his spirit, you see that opportunity that we have to love others around us is everywhere. And I pray that God will guide you, that God will continue to shower his great love upon you, guide you by his spirit to know and to recognize that love and give you that opportunities to share that love with the world around you today and always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the love that you showed for us on the cross the forgiveness that we have received. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to love others. Not for those wrong motives, not for self-focused or other-focused, but simply because you love us first. And we want to show that love to others. Guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We now join together and we confess our faith in our triune God, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now join together in singing Jesus Loves Me.
we have the privilege of going to our loving triune God in prayer. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, the love that you give us cannot be measured. We were created in love. We were redeemed in love. We were made holy in love. You have called us to love you and to love others. This is not easy to do. Even the love that we are blessed to give comes as a gift from you. Forgive us when we fail, O Lord. Guide us and keep us so that in the love we show, others may see you and know that we are your disciples. We thank you, living and loving Lord Jesus, that your heavenly Father raised you from the dead, so that through faith in you we would be forgiven sinners who are headed to heaven to live with you forever. But until you take us there, we thank you for being near us as our help and strength. We pray for your healing and strength for your servants, Emma Gehrin, Esther Bachenhus, Stacy Roshi Lamberty, Rosemary Stam, Lori Hess, Jane White, Nina Harris, John Lear, Dylan Kay, Daniel Saney, Jim Whitfeld, Shirley Gersib, Jean Britt, Juanita Miller, Tiffany Hawken, Larry Schmidt, Lori Henderson, Joe Marshall, Bob Bender, Tammy Miller, Stan Waldy, Catherine Smith, Wilma Fowler, Kayla Board, Lee Lowski, Larry Meyer, Kristen Moody, Greg Labens, Mark Joseph, Bill Sieper, and John Strebens. We also pray for those people who are suffering from the coronavirus pandemic, as well as an end to this pandemic in the near future. Help them and us to remember that you are always with us, are in control, and work all things together for the spiritual good of those who love you. Dear Lord Jesus, you are the great bridegroom of the church, which is your bride. We thank you for all Christian marriages. We especially celebrate the upcoming 25th wedding anniversary of your servants, Michael and Ann Brittenham, as well as the upcoming 35th wedding anniversary of your servants, Jeff and Sandy Krings. Continue to be with these couples. Renew and strengthen the love that they have for you and each other, and bless them and others through them as you keep them in your eternal care because of your great love for them. Heavenly Father, continue to be with the members of our armed forces. Watch over them and keep them safe as they attempt to bring peace to a world where there are always wars and rumors of wars. Give them courage and strength to face what is before them and to always look to you. Finally, dear Lord, we pray for our church's adopted missionaries, Julie and Anton Lutz, Sarah Canoy, the Wolf family, Peter and Lucy Hoffman, and Chelsea Irwin, as they proclaim your word in different parts of the world. Help us to partner with them through our prayers, our encouragement, and our offerings. These prayers, as well as anyone or anything else we are thinking about, we offer up to you, dear Lord, knowing that you hear and answer all of our prayers in Jesus' name as we now join together in praying the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. One um, announcement that I do want to make uh, is a reminder again. Our uh, annual voters meeting will be held March 27th uh, at 7 o'clock. We are still trying to figure out the details. Most likely it will be in the parking lot. Uh, and we're trying to figure out how all of that will work. Uh, it is on a Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, information that you will find in your bulletin. If you have one, you can download that also off the website. Uh, that, that information in there lists the, the three candidates uh, that have been nominated to fill the position for the church board. Please read over that, read over those, those uh, nominations, and also there's information uh, in there, other information in there as well about the voters meeting. Uh, on the website uh, at the, 2020, or the 2020 uh, annual meeting, uh, tap part of that. There is that information uh, concerning the elections, also information about the budget for the coming year. 
please take a look at that as well uh, so you are informed. Uh, and if you have any questions, make sure you send them on to the church or one of the board members as well. Uh, other announcements. We are continuing, as I mentioned earlier, with this recorded service. We will also be having our regularly regular services in the parking lot, uh, weather permitting, Saturday 6 o'clock, Sunday at 8 or 10.30. We are also adding a Monday at 7 for those who are working on the weekend uh, or if one of the other services gets canceled because of rain. So uh, we have added additional ways for you to continue to worship our, our triune God and perhaps with others of our congregation and community as well. Those are our announcements. Let's close with the last two verses of our closing hymn. Celebration. 